I just realized I still had my glasses on, so I thought maybe I should take them off. Right, we're live. Oh my God, we're live. Well, we're live with each other. We're live um, with each other. Not live yet. No. I think I think once we get moved to our new places. Yeah, and we have a permanent setup. Yes, where I don't have easier. to take things up and down anymore. That'd yeah. Be great. Yeah. We're a little scattered <laughs> usually, but uh, yes. Today we'll be answering questions. Questions. Yeah. So we've gotten get your, some. Get your thinking caps on, and uh, mine's really juicy. I'm excited for yours. Yeah, I am excited for yours. Very intrigued <laughs> and a little disturbed by it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. So are many people of my own community. So, um. But we'll get into that in just a moment. Yeah, let's get let's, started. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome to the Oblong Box, everyone. Welcome back. Another installment. I'm Virginia Poe. I'm Levi Leland. We're here again. And we're I am Sans you... Cats at the moment. Wow. We better hurry up. <laughs> They're all sleeping. It's a miracle. It must be the moon or something. The day. It's, it's kind of raining here. It's over here. Yeah. So no, maybe it's, it's, just, it's like raining here. So usually when it's raining, they're very, very sleepy. Makes sense. I'm and they're the very adorable way. when they sleep. Yeah. It's the only time they're good. So peaceful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So today we are going to be answering some fan questions, some, some viewer questions. questions. Yes. Hmm. And how. burning questions. <laughs> Levi, I, I feel like you should probably go first. Yeah, me. Well, yeah. Because mine me, might take a while. Okay, I'll I'll answer one of the ones that I saw that um, kind of you know made me tilt my head a little bit. Like, oh, that's a good question for someone who might not know too much about Poe. So, uh, one of the sure. questions that one of our viewers had sent in uh, that I had read uh, was, did Poe have any other interests outside of writing? So, you know, what what other things kind of intrigued him besides writing? I mean, we know he was a pretty diligent writer, you know, sure. his whole life. That was his main focus. And uh, he worked really hard at creating his body of works. I mean, you think he mm. lived 40 years, short right. 40 years, and, and created quite an extensive amount of work. So, mm -hmm. but he did have other interests. He you know, was, he was an avid, uh, thinker and, and explorer in, in the world of academia, really. I mean, he delved in, you know, theology and science and astronomy. Um, he also was an artist, uh, in, in college when he attended UVA. Yep. Um, there's anecdotes from some of his peers that, you know, said he would draw on the walls and the floors of his dorm room and, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and recite stories and poetry to his classmates. And, and a lot of his, uh, you know, a lot of his friends said, you know, we weren't sure if Poe was going to be a, a great artist or a great writer or, or what. Mm -hmm. So um, it's interesting to think about Poe kind of dabbling in every and any little thing that, you know, interested him. Um I know he played music as well, and he could sing. Uh, mm -hmm. There's stories of him playing the flute along with Virginia playing the harp or the piano. I wish and, there were recordings of that. Right. I know. I wish there were oh. recordings 
at that time of anything, just like oh, video I recordings, know. Uh, audio recordings. It would be so you know cool to hear. It would be speak amazing. Or, play music or sing or talk even just um but yeah a lot of people can't picture poe playing an instrument and in, or singing um his nurse marie louise Shu said that uh yeah he attended church with her one 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 evening and um she was so shocked to hear him sing the hymns like in perfect pitch and and you know Cell phones off, Virginia. What? What have I told so you? I'm so sorry. I <laughs> That's it. Hand it, was hand, it, hand it to the teacher. Come on, hand it over. It's going in the desk. You'll get it after class. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> God, I've never done that before. That's embarrassing. I don't, that's something I don't have to worry about. I, I'm not popular, so I don't get. Hey, at least we're not in church. And it's happening. You know, there is an anecdote of post cell church, phone going Church, funerals, off in and weddings. Absolute yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, this is a lot more lax. So I think we're okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was a question that kind of, you know, piqued my interest a little bit as, you know, and, and made me ponder, you know, oh, yeah, you know, Poe did have a lot of other interests outside of writing. Obviously, writing was his main focus in life and his main endeavor. But yeah, he dabbled in a little bit of everything that was <clears throat> creative or, you know, mindful or, you know, uh, like passionate. You know, he, he had a lot of passion. <clears throat> oh, no. Do we have our, our guest speaker here with us oh, now? Come on, Elliot. He's trying to get up in my lap. He's he's very confused because he's not sure how to get See, up. You jinxed Come it. Here, you jinxed it. Now I did jinx it. I said they were being good boys. And this is what happened. Yep. Maybe he'll just sit behind me. Okay. Um, we can keep going. I thought he was going to jump. <laughs> <laughs> I was so like, no. The, there was another question too that, that I saw, but this is a loaded question. And I think this would have to be kind of dispersed into maybe segments segments but of course it's the <laughs> age old question how did poe die oh there's so many different and, like theories on that we could right. literally do an episode on every Her, single yeah. theory of yeah so yeah. we could make this kind so, of the beginning of that because that was something on our docket good, anyhow <laughs> yeah this would be a <laughs> good segue intro. yeah this would be a good segue into that and mm -hmm. i will give the short answer that will allow us to segue into future episodes the short answer is i don't think poe died from one particular thing i think it was a combination of, of two or more things that oh ended up causing his death. How, ooh, so ooh, ooh, we need to talk about that answer. later yeah. my brain just went oh yeah good so that's the short answer i wanted that to be at least acknowledged because sure that question is the question i think with any it's the tale as old as time right so <laughs> that, i wanted to at least acknowledge that question and give the short answers and then allow us to make a promise that we will cover it more extensively in future episodes but you could literally like you said do a whole episode per one theory so those were my two that i saw in our mm -hmm. comments and emails and and all that that i had to address and i know you <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to wrangle a cat right now from not doing something very very bad elliot come here buddy he just wants to hear about your 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 he, buddy he there wants my <laughs> attention is what he wants so he's trying to get into anything and everything his little his little cat self can get into and I'm just going to have to pick him up and put him in my lap so that there he lays go. down just and be a good boy <laughs> as I'm trying not to knock my tea around. Huh, sorry. You know, cats happen. This Things is just this is how happen. it rolls. You know, cell phones go off. Well, in the new place, cats there's going to be a designated cat-free I'm recording zone. Right. As much as they are going to hate that. We'll just hear uh, them scratching at the door. <laughs> yeah, and then I might have to let them in and that's going to... Uh, it's gonna happen right. it's all right so um oh yes and we forgot to tell everyone that we've we're changing our format up a little bit so our yeah. episodes are no longer going to be like 45 minute things we're going to try to keep this in under 30 minutes or less 
Um, yeah, 30 minutes or less per episode, no mini-sodes. Yeah, so, no mini-sodes. The mini-sodes end up just being long oh, I'm Being an actual <laughs> episode in our new yeah. format now, so whatever. So we will um, just stick to the 30-minute intervals and yep. give you and as it, much and content it'll, it'll as we just can have to that. work. Yeah. That's why I have to be mindful of how long I talk, and I, I try to be as brief as possible, but we both know how hard that is in this subject. <laughs> It's very I love hard you to anyway, Levi. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I still love you. Um, thank you. I have terrible allergies, so please forgive me if I keep batting up my eyes. I'm not crying <laughs> because this is such a hard topic to discuss. Because your yours might be. I don't know. This is this might <laughs> bring some tears to a few people. <laughs> so I'm just going to preface this by saying the first rule of being a goth is we never talk about the fact that we're goths. Right. That is rule one. Um. Clearly. I mean, I, I really don't feel I'm wearing enough eyeliner. Um, I feel like I probably needed to paint my nails to, to tackle this question. Um, yeah, I definitely don't have enough eyeliner on. Um, <laughs> Black lipstick, that's for sure. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, I need to have some bats flying around my head. Right. Um, maybe perhaps a crow or two, you know, sitting on my shoulder. Yeah. That, that, that's Mike how I roll. I have them on my fingers, though. There you go. Yeah, so. yeah. Never, never leave home without my my babes here. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> this question was posed by um, someone very near and dear to my heart, actually on our Facebook page, and I died laughing because I had a weird feeling <laughs> that if anyone was going to ask this question, it was going to be her. Mm -hmm. Looking at you, Jennifer. Um. So, yes, um, the question was, is what would Eddie think of Nicolas Cage being a goth? And, of course, at the time when I read this, I was drinking coffee, so I kind of spit my coffee a little bit because it just kind of caught me off guard. Right. I shouldn't have been surprised by that question, but it was not what I was expecting, so it really just made me laugh. Yeah. Um, Same here. When you when you had told me, I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> I am sure most of our listeners have probably seen the recent articles um, that have been going around Rolling Stone and Variety and all these other, you know, news sites talking about Nicolas Cage talking about how, yes, he he's a goth. Right. And, right. you know, a lot of my friends and I are like, you know, Nick, the first rule of being goth is you don't talk about being yeah. a goth. Yeah, I guess. But, that's you know, we, we are very large and very major I think um, subculture that's lasted for quite longer than I think most folks would have imagined it. It right. has morphed and changed over the years, but specifically speaking of Eddie, if you think about it, a lot of basis of things within the Gothic subculture are very drenched <laughs> in 1800s literature, art, mm. music. Um, you know, it's, we're a very heavily arts influenced community, um, yeah. you know? So uh, it's kind of like, he's kind of at the beginning of what would become roots of that. And then of course, you know, there's music and the whole nine yards. And, but I think if we were to take Eddie, like if Eddie had zero idea, like I, and, and we brought him into modern day, I mean, we would have to educate him about oh yeah, talking it would pictures be a, and yeah. music, and it would be I think he would be very, very confused, um, not quite understanding. But if we took Nicolas Cage, the actor, and kind of dumped him, maybe maybe in eighteen hundreds, yeah, as like a as just an actor extraordinaire, I think Eddie probably would have been very fascinated by Nicholas. Um, and again, transporting forward. Um, you know, if, if Eddie were in this time, I mean, clearly, you know, a lot of us within the community do and are fans of, of my darling husband, Mr. Poe. And so it's, I think he would have, again, been fascinated 
by Nicolas Cage. But the thing that the thing about this article, and I think she knew that it was going to drive me nuts. Yeah. Um, is his quoting saying that talking about how he has a pet crow. Yeah, that, um, that kind of made oh, me but, wonder a little bit. Like, but wait for it. <laughs> Because this yeah, is something, I, this is a topic of discussion that will happen later. I'm not going to delve super hard into it now because <laughs> it is a big pet peeve of mine. And that will be the educational part of that particular episode down the road. Um, but he's talking about how he has this pet crow. His pet crow's name is Hugin. As we know, Hugin is one of the two ravens of the Allfather, Odin. Um, and so I'm sitting here going, um, Hugin's a raven, but I mean, hey, if you want to name your crow Hugin, but ah, uh, this wait, this is a crow. Yeah. Guess what? This is a crow. Ravens, okay, oh, little different beak structure. Actually, their beak structure is very different. They are much yeah. larger birds. I will delve into that much, much later on. Yeah. But he goes on to say, after he's talking about his pet crow, that he liked the Edgar Allan Poe feel of it all. And I'm just sitting here going... A little off, oh, a little off, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. but it's not crow's love. Oh, it's ravens. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> And it just kind of made me go, ah. So I think even Eddie, in that aspect, if he were to have read this article and if he were in modern day with us, he probably would have been like, ah. Right. You know, I think he would have raised his finger and said, sir, <laughs> might I point out something to you? <laughs> you know, but... <laughs> But I digress. Yeah. I, I just I did find this um, article quite hilarious. Um, it, yeah, it, it was funny. All right. <laughs> yeah. Of all yeah. people, Nicholas Cage. Wow. Of, uh, you know, and after all this time, it's like, oh, you're coming out as a guy. Oh, could have done that like 30 years ago. You yeah. know? Yeah. You, you don't seem to care much about what people think of you, although he did change his last name, you know, when he started acting. Oh. So that he would not get any favors in the industry. Oh, I think I recall hearing something about that. His last name is actually Coppola. Okay. I, <laughs> yes. yeah, I, I think so I is, read something about he's that. He's Francis's nephew. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's his uncle. Huh. So of course, with Mr. Coppola being such a highly respected and quite frankly, a very, very good director. i have quite mm. fond of his films is kind of getting away from Eddie in a sense. But, um, but yeah, um, he didn't want any favors from the industry as being, huh. you know, the nephew of Francis Ford right. Coppola, you know? Um, so he did change his last name and, and I know in the, and this is speaking of me being a has-been actress, <laughs> no shame in it. I didn't, you know, I still perform just, not on stage like that. Different capacity. Um, yeah, I, I, in a very different capacity now. Um, but um, there are certain things that they make you hide about yourself to seem more approachable by casting oh, okay. agents and stuff like that. So I mm. guess he felt he needed to hide it for this long. The article also made this comment about how after he saw... Oh, shoot. It was uh, James Wan's... Uh, I can't remember which movie it was now. Um, but he he saw some James Wan film and he decided he wanted to tackle horror film. And I'm like... Tackle? Hmm. Um, sir. <laughs> you've been in several already. <laughs> what are you talking about? Tackling a horror film? Um, if anyone is unfamiliar with Vampire's Kiss, um, <clears throat> watch at your own risk. I will leave it at that. Um, mm. If you don't want to watch Vampire's Kiss, I do highly recommend um, checking out um, Guide to the Unknown. This is 
not a paid advertisement. I just, I love that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no. But um, they did an entire thing back in October. It was called Cagetober. Um, brilliant series of episodes that they did. Um, and they do discuss a vampire's kiss. And I had already seen the movie. And I'm just like, oh, those poor unfortunate souls. They, they <laughs> actually watched this. I'm so sorry. It It kind of comes off being very goofy. Um, and it's kind of horrific, and then it becomes very, very sad, and you're like, oh. huh. but I digress. Um, so there are many things about Nicholas's <laughs> Nicholas's work over the years that I think Poe would be very fascinated by, um, and I think he'd be greatly amused. And yeah. I do believe he would have to, uh, you know, try to <clears throat> politely correct. Although I don't know how. Well, I, I don't know. yeah, I don't. It, do you we're think, talking do you think about that would tomahawk his corruption? man here? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I think I knew Poe, I was I was I was yeah. leading you into that. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas Cage. I mean, Nicholas Cage is very very. He's oh my critiqued very Elliot. harshly, <laughs> even today by oh, today's. Yes. You know, because oh, he kind of even still he does he doesn't really play different characters. He plays Nicolas Cage as nowadays. Yes, it's just oh, yes. he plays the same person in each movie he's in. It, there's no you know, uh, you know, compared to someone like Johnny Depp who literally transforms into a whole new person with each role. Mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage is just kind of Nicolas Cage, and he, and that's kind of the joke. That's the running joke with him as right. an actor is that right. he he doesn't play the character per the movie. It's just he plays Nicolas Cage in each movie he's in. So Poe would have right. a lot a lot to say about that, I'm sure, because Poe, you know, was first critic of all things, and yeah. I would love to see Poe's critique of some of our modern day actors and writers and artists. Oh my and heavens, it be, yes. It would be incredible. Oh my heavens, yes. We need yes. someone like Poe. <laughs> I would love uh, for that. Yeah, that would be my one one dream, I think. It would, you know. Uh, oh, it would let's be see amazing. what Poe thinks of some of our contemporary <laughs> that would be artists, fantastic. actors, right? It would just be, it would be hilarious, honestly. I would love yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I think he would be very drawn to Nicholas's ability to be very seriously overly almost like um just very overly oh my gosh. Elliot. Young I'm man. telling you, we just have to have a separate podcast for Elliot so he can just <laughs> He really just wants to be on show. camera so bad. He's trying everything he can to get my attention. He's like trying to knock over all these things that he's not supposed to be on the table. It's probably time for him oh, to eat or God. something. He's like, come on, let's go. <laughs> come here, little man. You're being bad boy. Oy, oy, oy. Anyhow, yes. So being overly dramatic and, you know, I, I, I think because, you know, we all know that a lot of Poe's work is heavily heavily into the drama but yeah definitely but it but it's not like it, it's not a caricature of right. itself you know right. it's it's very serious and you know people just don't i mean obviously that it was the it was the way he wrote and not many people do write like that mm -hmm. and so every now and again i do see an actor or hear a musician that Life with cats, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> and don't think that this didn't happen to Eddie this, and Ginny because it probably totally did. <laughs> yeah, right? Because I mean, cats. <laughs> Katarina probably made her her oh. way into their business at times, oh. you know. I'm quite sure she probably Stepping ran across the piano a couple of times. And, yeah, oh, yeah. Gosh. Spilling the ink over and, you know. Yes. Uh cats you know cats but maybe elliot we should hire him as our new director because he's probably seeing the time and he's like okay okay it's guys to, it's, know, a wrap. Cut, it's a wrap you know, and, cut and <laughs> and then we could be like thank you elliot all right we you know he goes all back right. to his director's chair and he's like all right yeah so i mean <laughs> but we do yeah so definitely yeah, so appreciate I, these questions you know yeah. i think they're fun so I to think answer the hot take the hot take do do we think 
that uh, Edgar would be amused by the news. Amused. I think amused is the best word. I don't think he would approve. I don't think he would... (gasps) you know, enjoy it. I don't think right, he would right. be into it. I think he would be amused by it. And I think he would have a lot to say about it. Oh, Maybe I wish some we could get a, things, but I wish we could get, I wish we could get that editorial because that would be brilliant. Oh, I know we need a, we need a modern day Poe. We really do. <laughs> oh. I would subscribe. I would I definitely would. subscribe. <laughs> Hands down, I'd subscribe. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's really honestly it for us today. Yeah, um, that was that was our little uh, response to some of your burning questions. We keep sending them in, obviously, and we can every once course. in a while we'll throw an episode like this out there. But I think the Nicholas Cage thing was the one that we really had to <laughs> we had to tackle that one. We had to Let's tackle clear that the air. It was Let's clear the air on hysterical. that Hysterical. It was kind of burning at me, and I was like, yeah. okay. We got it. We got Yeah, and then same same year. I was just like, okay, scratching my head. This. Okay. And I Nicholas have been Cage. in a movie with him, and I can say he's um very quiet, um interesting. You went all this time without <laughs> giving out that piece of information. Here we are wrapping it up, and now you tell us. <laughs> Oh That'll my be another. God. I'll tell you Part that story two. some other day. Part that, two. That's that's a convo for you and me. That's okay. fine. That that'll be one of our you know, our 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 brainstorming sessions. But I'll just tell you that whole story. Okay. It'll be fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you know now how our I, conversations go. <laughs> now I need to know. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't. So anyway, um, next week, uh, next Sunday, is that when we're doing? We're just gonna get it out of the way. He who shall not be named. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So Let's next week, it. join yeah. us. Yeah. We will be discussing uh, <clears throat> Rumpus Grizzle. Rumpus <laughs> Grizzle. Um, <laughs> because he <Rumpel>. doesn't deserve. <laughs> call him Rumpel Stilts Dummy. <laughs> Rumpel um, Grizzly. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about him. And we are going to be talking about the aftermath that he caused. Um, that is going to lead into us also discussing a lot of the myths that have happened over the years um, right. that, that are very, to this so day, people st- yeah. exactly that people still think are the truth mm-hmm. about Edgar. And, it, and it's sad because what people write about you in death sometimes outweigh what you actually did in real life. Um, yeah. And that can go either good or bad. Um, but um But there you have it. So we're going to do that. Um, Also, remember this month, it's, I forgot to write down the date. (laughs) Remember, everybody, I forgot. (laughs) Don't forget to remember. Yeah. Um, Yes. So the next Bicentennial, the next Virginia Bicentennial (laughs) program (laughs) called The Muse um, in conjunction with Poe Baltimore and, uh, the uh, Edgar Allan Poe House, uh, House and Museum, uh, Poe Museum in Richmond, yep, Boston, the Bronx Historical Society, and, yep. the Baltimore Women to, Women's Heritage. Um, I'm forgetting, and I believe Poe International. I believe. Oh yeah, too. They're, yeah. They're they're, everybody they're is coming together on this. Out these it's, programs yes, and it's the the next program is out. the Muse. Um, you can get hooked up through that on Eventbrite. Um, it is later this month. We do have that event page posted on our Facebook. So uh, just click the link there and you can get set up for that. We shall be in attendance. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So Great. we hope that we see you all next week. Um, don't forget to keep those questions coming. Mm-hmm. Um, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on all your major platform casts. BTOB. Podcast platform. at gmail.com. I need more <laughs> email. Yeah. It's been a morning. It's been a morning. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Cage and Ruckus Grizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Levi and I are both in the process of moving into new homes. And Life, it's... Yeah. And we're doing it at the same time. So, <laughs> Whee! yeah, yeah. It's been, oh, okay. It's I guess we fun, have to go back so. to packing now. Let's, yeah, let's let's okay. wrap it up. We'll uh, <laughs> back to packing. We'll see you next time, all, and thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye.